Oh, hey. How are you guys doing today? Are you guys ready Hi, to... Excuse me, Mr. Furlong, I have a question. What, what? Um, how do, how do I draw? How do you draw what? No, just like, how do I draw? <laughs> um, well, that's actually a pretty common question that I get. Or I can't draw, or I don't know how to draw. And really, if you think about it, that's pretty understandable. Especially if you've never had an art class before. Just imagine trying to read or write if you've never learned it in school. And sometimes when it comes to drawing, it's really just about learning how to see what you see. If, if that makes any sense. <laughs> how to better interpret and understand what you are looking at. So that you can translate it to the paper with a pencil. You gotta learn how to break things down into basic shapes and forms. Gustave Courbet, born as Jean Desiré Gustave Courbet, is a renowned French artist during the 19th century realist movement. He was dedicated to presenting his independent style in art as he steered clear of their traditional art techniques during his time. In fact, his unique style became a source of inspiration amongst the Cubist and Impressionists. Here is some of his work. Let's go take a look at how to do some observational drawing. That's drawing um, something you're looking at, whether it's a person or a still life. First, let's practice sighting and measuring with a pencil. This will help you to understand what you're looking at. Fully stretch your arm out with your elbow locked. I rest my chin against my shoulder to help stabilize my head. Using one eye, line the tip of your lead up on one edge. Slide your thumb along your pencil to line up with the other edge. Use this technique to help measure the length and width of objects. Compare their size and proportions and measure the negative space or distance in between objects. It can also help you see the angles of lines. Next, let's look at my buddy, Manny Kin, who's striking a pose. The first time you try to draw them, it might seem like a challenging task. But if you really study them and break it down into basic shapes, it seems much easier. Really, just some circles and ovals into whatever shape you'd call the torso. Trapezoid? More of a freeform or organic shape. Next, let's see if we can find some shapes in a still life. Most of the objects in this still life can be made up from some basic cylinders and a sphere. And a bit more complicated still life. Same thing. Just a bunch of shapes. Alright! Now that you know how to look for these basic shapes and forms, try to draw them. Using sighting and measuring techniques, I figure out the general size and shape of my still life. Then I sketch out those basic shapes and forms that we found earlier. And remember, draw very, very lightly. I'm using red, so it's easier for you to see. I use my pencil to help measure both the real life still life, as well as the drawing as I sketch it out. How wide is the hay compared to the saddle? The saddle is about one and a half hay bales wide. I measure the overall height of the entire still life, which is about four and a quarter times taller than the hay. I measure the negative space in between the hay and the hat, which is about equal to the width of the hay. And then I remeasure some of my angles to make sure I got those accurate. Overall, my sketch is looking pretty good. 
Oh, hey. All right. Why don't you go and apply those basic observational drawing skills and see how much they improve your art.